In this video series, I will teach you how to create maps with GeoJSON, raster tiles, and vector tiles. And in the process, I will talk about how to retrieve open data and overlay it on top of maps which you will be building, you know, to create a solution. Once we get the basics out of the way, I will talk about what's trending at the moment with the uh, JavaScript libraries and tools. Once we cover the basics and also talked about what's out there at the moment, I will teach you how to repurpose a map which you have built earlier in the lessons and bring it into reality. In other words, repurpose it for augmented reality. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Viswesh Subramanian. I've been professionally developing software for the past decade. And at the moment, I'm working with Juniper Networks. Now, if you would rather read uh, you know, or have a link to a text version of this particular video post, I've written an article at JavaScript Store. And then I will leave a link in the description box below. Please feel free to check them out anytime. Every endeavor has a humble beginning, and so does maps. For maps, the humble beginning starts from GeoJSON. Now, GeoJSON is a standards format for representing geographical features in JSON format. Now, like my mentor always tells me that to truly understand something, we need to get in there and build something ourselves. So how about we build a map with GeoJSON and while at it, create a Coroplith version of it to visualize the population density of a specific age group. That sounds fascinating. What does it take to build such a visual? Well, obviously we need to find an appropriate GeoJSON to draw our map. And once we draw it, we also need to uh, overlay population metrics on top of it. And finally, what is a visual without interaction? A buddy of mine uh, tells me that a visualization is like a room without windows if it does not have interactions. Let's look at the final version which we'll be building. If you'd like to clone the repo and follow along, I will leave a link in the description box below. Let's get started. In front of you is the final version of the Coroplith map. So as you could see, uh, it is displaying the population density of 18 year olds in the year 2017. A quick recap on how to build it. First, we need to find the appropriate GeoJSON and draw a map. And after that, we need to find the right population metrics you know, from an API or a data set and fill in those land masses with the uh, correct color. And finally, we need to add interactions. Let's quickly look at from where we can actually you know, extract and mine a GeoJSON. All right, the first place we need to go is natural load. Now these guys, uh, this GIS, GIS uh, Institute, they do an amazing job to curate a data set, map data set from zoom level zero to zoom level eight. Zoom level, a uh, little more context to that. I have a link here which talks more about what it actually means. All right, so as you can see, uh, Level zero is up there. Imagine you're up in the space and you're looking at the world. And then as you go down, uh, zoom level increases. And uh, you know, natural earth, they do a phenomenal job uh, you know, to, do, to provide us a data source up until zoom level eight. All right, so you go there and you download countries. And when you download and extract the uh, downloaded contents, you will be presented with a lot of file formats. Do not fret. The file which we are looking for is a .shp extension. Now we copy the shp file and what we need to do now is to convert the shp file and create a geojson out of it. Uh, the creator of d3.js, Mike Bostock, he had actually created a utility which is a shape file which converts a shp file into geojson. It basically, you know, and from the terminal, if you uh, type in shp to json and then you point to the downloaded shp file, it produces a geojson, right? Now, I need to confess, geojson is not the end of the world. Uh, geojson, uh, you see, as you start downloading more geojson and stitching them together for better map resolution, 
the file size goes way off the roof. Now, uh, you know, Mike Bostoff you know, found that as an issue and he really wanted to solve that. So he created a solution. He created TopoJSON, which is an extended version of JSON. What it basically does is it removes off all the redundant data and really compresses the file size so that, uh, you know, you really get the uh, bang for the buck. Imagine if you had, you know, 10 MB of GeoJSON and, and from your browser, you actually clicked on a button which, you know, renders a map. That particular button sends out an XHR. It goes out, uh, you know, out in the world. And uh, by the time you uh, get your response back, the GeoJSON, by the time you get it back, you will end up growing a full uh, beard. So instead of that, you could rather convert the GeoJSON once again into TopoJSON and wait for topo json in, instead and when you actually compare the file size of geojson and topo json you'll be really surprised uh, the other oss module which i was talking about is right here right in front of you the topo json so topo json what it basically does is uh, it converts your uh, well it actually has a lot of you know, helper methods the first one which we are interested in is uh, the server from the server, you know, from the server side, you can actually convert the GeoJSON to TopoJSON, right? Now, uh, here is a small note: TopoJSON is not a standard which everybody understands. So we need to convert it back into GeoJSON at the time of rendering. My boss talk, he actually understood that problem as well, and he's actually holding us, holding our hands way up till the end. So he created another utility uh, to convert it back into GeoJSON. So that is the file which I have yanked in here in our loyal friend index.html topojson.js. All right. And I've also thrown in uh, d3.js. Now, at this day and age, the better way to do it would be to uh, yanking these modules as uh, you know, modules and not to really uh, you know pollute the global namespace and then have the modern module bundlers to shake off those unused modules so that you have an optimized build but since our objective is to really get started and to build these amazing maps we are not going to do all those fancy uh, fancy build steps we're just going to go uh, straight for the kill and throw in all these modules on top of the uh, global namespace and we are going to see to it that we have our end results. All right. Now, first thing first, we have our loyal index.html. Uh, we have d3.js to render the map. And we also have topojson to convert the uh, topojson back into geojson. So what I've done is I've taken the liberty to go ahead uh, to download the necessary files from natural earth, convert it into Topo JSON, and I have it right here. And this, uh, the world map of Topo JSON, world map which is in Topo JSON file format, is also available in my uh, GitHub repository. I'll leave a link in the description. So if you don't want to go to Natural Earth, download it, and use all this conversion, feel free to use this. All right. Now that we have that out of the way, the second data source is the population metrics. Population metrics, I my go-to source for population data is api.population.io. In that, there is a beautiful API to get the right data set for us. So what we were interested was is to get the population density for a particular age group for a specific year. So this particular API provides us just that. All right, so it is population year aged age. Now if we go down, there is a place where I can change the input. You know, there's a web client for us to do it, and then it's 18 years old. All right, 2017 and 18. All right, let's try it out. There we go. So we have the population information right here. Now, what I've done is instead of uh, you know, calling this API, I've downloaded the actual response and captured it over here in population.json. So the first object, as you can see, is Afghanistan and the age is 18 and you have the number of males and number of uh, females. All right. So we have both of the data set required to render our choropleth map. Now we need to get to uh, index.html. All right. 
So the first thing first, let's let's throw in the title. It's a 2017 population review, 18 years old. All right. Now, the details. Uh, you know, if you forgot the demo, as you hover over a specific landmass, you will get more information. Right here, you have Kenya and female and male population. So that particular div, we'll use that div to set those values. All right. Okay, and I've also thrown in some styles to make it look all fancy, but that is, well, don't pay too much attention to it. It's just a little bit of a CSS magic in there. All right, now let's go to main.js where uh, the engine, where the actual implementation is. Now, since it's a responsive map, uh, you know, we need to actually catch, capture the client width and client hit for initial render. Right, so we catch the width and height, and after that, we take the SVG, uh, which is d3.select.body. We select it whenever with the help of D3, we select the body and we append an uh, SVG, and we also set the styler to move because uh, you know, we are, uh, with interaction, we are going to have a, uh, we need to inform the user that he can actually pan around the map. So we set the style cursor to move so that you get that, you know, that move cursor. And after that, for the SVG, uh, we set the view box. Now, here's a neat trick. Uh, back in the day, I remember when uh, anybody talks about uh, visualization and making it responsive, there used to be, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people used to write uh, window dot resize listener and anytime the user resizes the browser it calls init or draw map functions and that keeps on re-rendering everything but today you don't need to do that uh, there is better ways to do it and this is one of the ways to not re-render the entire world well literally the entire world by instead of that you could uh, pretty much have the same effect by setting an attribute preserve aspect ratio and setting it to x men y men now that does a job. You can resize your browser top down, left, right, and the visualization inside the uh, group, the SVG group, it actually, uh, you know, grows and shrinks based on the viewport available, All right? So now that we have the SVG, which is the uh, top level SVG, we create a group element, SVG group element, and set a class map. The second step is to uh, yank in these data sets. The first one is the world topo JSON, and then the second data set is the, the population metrics to, to render the choropleth map. Now we do that with d3.q. With d3.q, you can queue up multiple tasks, and once all these tasks complete, the callback function which you define for the await function, it comes into play. So what really happens is, um, you know, if there's an error, there is an error. Oh dear, something went wrong. And the first uh, attribute will be the uh, uh, the first defer task which you write. So in our case, it will be the topo JSON, and after that, it will be the population metrics, right? So once we get both of the the topo, topo JSON as well as the uh, the population metrics, we call our protagonist the draw map. So the draw map function is where all the magic happens. The first thing what we need to do is set the projection. Now this is the uh, the heart of the visual. D3 has this helper method to convert the spherical nature of all the uh, the coordinates into a planar format or in other words 2D because you know what we are dealing with here is all 2D in you know in our uh, browser so we need to set the projection first and after creating a projection uh, we will create a path now the path is to uh, so that's that's the you know the guy who's actually doing the real job he is converting the projection and drawing those lines to establish the boundaries between states and countries right now after that we set the uh, the color for different thresholds. I mean, remember, it is a choropleth map. So for that, we need a set of color uh, palette, you know, a, a, you know, palette full of colors for us to pick and render our map. A quick shout out to Color Brewer. I'll leave a link in the description box below. Uh, 
you know, if you ever wanted to build a corporate map, uh, Color Brewer Utility is fantastic. You go in there, you, and there's also a web version of it. You, you basically go change the colors which you want or the number of uh, different thresholds you're looking for, and the app generates it for you. And you can pretty much copy it and repurpose it to what you want it to do. All right. Now, as we have discussed before, we need to convert the uh, TopoJSON back into GeoJSON. And like I said earlier, Mike Bostock, he is still holding our hands with this TopoJSON.feature method. So to that, we pass the, uh, the TopoJSON. All right. And what happens is, uh, in turn, we get a GeoJSON. All right. Now, the features variable is a GeoJSON. Now, what we do next is we need to uh, extract the population data from the GeoJSON, which we, uh, you know, uh, which is which was from the second network task, and we are creating a hash over here, population by ID. Uh, so the objective of this particular registry is to have a key, which is the property name in our uh, scenario. It's the country name, and then you have an object where it is, uh, you know, the total population and it's divided into females and males, number of people who make up the total. And the reason why we have this registry outside is for us uh, to facilitate an easy lookup. Since it's a hash, I can uh, easily go back and check by the key. And you know, instead of looping through an array, uh, it's just you know, I can basically it's much more faster. All right. Now, the next step is to loop through all of the features, which is our GeoJSON now and we decorate the object, right? We decorate the object with additional information, which we are calling it as details. So we go back to our registry, population by ID, look up by the country name, US, China, India, Africa, and we pull in those details and we decorate the object. After that, uh, we move ahead with drawing the actual map. So we select the map and we append a group and we select all the paths and we set the data, which is our GeoJSON. And after that, it's enter, append path. Uh, we set an attribute name. Uh, we set an ID to it and fill. So this is the important path, uh, important place where we define the fill. In SVG, for those of you who do not know, to create a background color in SVG, it is fill. So we set uh, the style attribute as fill and we look up the color, the appropriate color through the total. So for example, if you have 10 million, we call color function and we say, hey, you know, it's 10 million. Give me an appropriate color in relation with every other uh, population data and then we'll get a color back. Now, where is color defined? Right here. So uh, D3 offers some special utility methods through which you can uh, set a domain, which is basically a population data, and then a range to say, you know, hey, these are my uh, population metrics, and these are the colors uh, which are related to the population metrics, and it does the job for you. All you need to call, uh, all you need to invoke is invoke color, function and pass in uh, the domain in our case which will be the total population and then d3 will return us a, 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 an appropriate color from the range okay all right well actually you know that's about it so with that without uh, you know without having mouse over or mouse out only with that you'll be able to generate a corporate map and a task will be complete but we need to have some interactions uh, especially, you know, we need more information, right? Because it's just big chunks of uh, land masses. What if you want to know more information about the population? I mean, at the end of the day, we are trying to provide more information about population metrics. So on mouse over, uh, we create a function and we basically select that particular land mass and we uh, decorate it with some strokes so that you have this nice fancy, uh, you know, colors to highlight that particular landmass, and we basically, you know, the flyout. If you remember, in our index.html, we had details, male, female, uh, placeholders. We basically go ahead and set the inner HTML, or in this case, the text, to the correct number. 
Finally, we set the actual the top level details pane to uh, visibility visible so that it just shows up. Let me show you. All right, so I'm, I'm uh, hovering on top of Angola and on the left you have the details top level pane which is visible right now and all of the other male and female uh, devs are set with appropriate information. All right, now when you mouse over you also need to reset whatever you did uh, on mouse over so that it goes back to the uh, the initial state and also you set the details visibility to hidden so that the the top level pane goes away now that's about it that uh, that that's it uh, that's all it takes to create a map with GeoJSON but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not really impressed by this because you know you look at this, you just you know, and you zoom in and you pan this map with just large chunks of land masses. I need to see more street names, uh, you know, point of interest, hospitals, prisons, but I do not. And well, uh, uh, we do have a solution for that. We can use raster tiles to uh, overlay or you know, have another layer in this map to provide us that context. And that will be covered in the next video. All right, thank you guys. I'll see you in the next post.